What we have behind us is uh, a large stainless steel chamber uh, where we recreate part of the atmosphere. And it's a very, very clean chamber. We've worked very hard to make uh, the inside and so on very clean. And we recreate part of the atmosphere, including the trace gases and temperatures and so on, inside that chamber. And we look at um, the effect of the particle beam from the CERN proton synchrotron on the production of the seeds for cloud droplets. The fundamental motivation for cloud is there seem to be observations that uh, when a cosmic ray goes through the atmosphere, it may affect cloud formation. Uh, but at the moment, we have no idea what the mechanism is. So we've designed cloud to actually study what happens, uh, what is the possible connection between a cosmic ray and all cloud processes. And we're starting right at the beginning. We're looking at the formation of the embryonic seeds, which eventually may grow to the size to become a cloud droplet. So we, we've now uh, had our first year's operation and we have some very interesting results. Um, we found that when the beam is on, there are indeed, uh, there's a big increase in the production of particles in the chamber. And for the first time, we've actually measured what the enhancement is due to the beam or due to cosmic rays. Um, we've also, for the very first time, measured molecule by molecule the growth of these uh, critical clusters, these very small clusters, which when they've uh, grown to a, above only 20 molecules are then stable and can grow m much bigger. But there's a very difficult barrier that they have to overcome. And we've measured molecule by molecule these particles grow. And so for the first time, we actually know what goes into them. Nobody's done that before. These results, these new results from cloud, uh, are important because we've made a number of uh, first observations of some very important processes that may be going on in the atmosphere. And they concern the formation of uh, embryonic clusters of particles that may eventually grow to become the seeds for cloud droplets. And in particular, we've measured the effects of cosmic rays or the ions from cosmic rays on the formation of these particles. And what we found is that cosmic rays do significantly enhance the production of these particles. Uh, we've also managed to measure for the very first time exactly the molecules that are participating uh, in these uh, so-called critical clusters, which uh, are important because uh, at this size, the clusters typically will evaporate. And we've discovered exactly why it is that they don't evaporate and grow above this cri critical size. We've also uh, done the first measurement of these processes between, in the laboratory, between ground level and up to mid-troposphere. So all in all, there's uh, a lot of uh, new, uh, new results coming out of this, uh, this first round of experiments. So why CERN? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's nature that may have connected Earth's clouds with the high-energy physics of the cosmos. We don't know whether that's a fact, uh, but that's, why, that's what's brought cloud to CERN, to find out. Um, on a more practical level, there are two essential reasons. Firstly, of course, CERN, has, uh, CERN accelerators produce a, a beautiful uh, particle beam which perfectly replicates natural cosmic rays. And secondly, and very importantly, there's, uh, the experiment is very challenging, and CERN know-how uh, is extremely important in, bring in designing and building the experiment. For example, um, if we have impurities in this chamber at the level of one part per trillion, they can uh, affect the results, spoil the results. So we've put into the design of the experiment extraordinary care and attention to all aspects, and we've made what we believe is the chamber in the world. One, one example uh, is that the air that we put into the chamber, we can't purify natural air well enough, so we actually make synthetic air from cryogenic liquid oxygen and cryogenic liquid nitrogen. The next step is we, we have still more uh, chemicals, that more trace substances that we have to put inside the chamber to understand the formation of these embryonic seeds. But cloud will not stop there. We, we want to look at all processes that may connect a cosmic ray with a cloud. And so we want to look at the growth of these particles up to the size where they're big enough to seed cloud droplets. 
which actually is 100,000 times bigger, so it's a long way to go. And um, we also want to look at the effects of cosmic rays directly on the droplets and the ice particles themselves in clouds, and there may be effects there. So we've, we've built very much uh, what, what particle physicists would call a general purpose detector. When all these instruments are attached uh, to these sampling probes around the chamber, we have a detector which, where we can see we're open to surprises. We can look for many effects that we're not even anticipating. But what we do know now from the first year's operation is that the cloud chamber definitely performs like a precision instrument and it's fully capable of doing the job that's intended to do, but we don't know what the answers are yet. And that's uh, what we're doing while we're doing the, ex the measurements. But the very, very first year's measurements are very exciting and we've already discovered uh, some important new effects. Things would go out radiantly. Yes. Okay. I think it's a good direction. That's a, if you stay dead centered on that, you can be sure you're well yes. clear. Each cubic centimetre of Earth's atmosphere contains hundreds of tiny solid or liquid particles, known as aerosols. Most of these particles are too small to be seen with an ordinary microscope, but without them there would be no clouds in the sky. Up to half these aerosols may originate from trace atmospheric vapours, which condense to form tiny molecular clusters. Once formed, the aerosols may eventually grow large enough to seed cloud droplets. However, this process is poorly measured and is limiting our understanding of clouds. Now it's being studied under controlled laboratory conditions by the cloud experiment at CERN. Atmospheric observations indicate that sulfuric acid vapour is required to form the embryonic aerosols, even though the atmosphere contains only extremely small amounts. 
less than one in a million million molecules. At high altitudes, above 5,000 meters, where the temperature is below minus 25 degrees Celsius, these molecules collide together and stick to each other for a short time, but then generally separate. So something else must be helping them stick together. The cloud experiment has found that cosmic rays will do this. Cosmic rays are high-energy subatomic particles generated by supernovae in the Milky Way galaxy. They continuously rain down on our planet and collide with nuclei high in the atmosphere, producing showers of secondary subatomic particles. When this cosmic rain passes through the atmosphere, it knocks electrons out of some molecules which then attach to others. This results in positively or negatively charged molecules known as ions. When one of the negative ions collides with a molecule of sulfuric acid, the acid molecule becomes negatively charged. This enables it to attract other sulfuric acid molecules, causing them to collide at a higher rate. And when they do collide, the sulfuric acid molecules stick together for a longer time. With more sulfuric acid and water molecules arriving, a charged cluster forms and grows. Once it exceeds a critical mass containing only a few molecules, the cluster becomes a stable aerosol. Rather than evaporating, it then continues to grow by further condensation of sulfuric acid and other vapours, in particular organic vapours produced, for example, by trees. The cloud experiment has found that charged clusters are up to 10 times more efficient than neutral clusters at forming stable aerosols. Many of these newly formed aerosols are lost by coagulating with pre-existing aerosols, but some may grow big enough to form new seeds for cloud droplets. These are known as cloud condensation nuclei, or CCN. The CCN are at least 50 nanometer in size. That is more than 50 millionths of a millimeter. When the relative humidity of the surrounding air reaches slightly above 100%, the CCN will see droplets and a cloud will form. Depending on the temperature and the nature of the CCN, either a liquid droplet or an ice particle forms. At high altitudes, the ice particles form cirrus clouds. The cloud experiment has found that in the lowest one kilometer of the atmosphere, known as the boundary layer, this phenomena happens in a different way. In the warmer temperatures of the boundary layer, charged sulfuric acid clusters grow no larger than three molecules, while bigger ones simply evaporate back to three molecules. However, if a molecule of ammonia collides with a cluster shortly after a sulfuric acid molecule has arrived, it stabilizes the acid molecule and the cluster can continue to grow. Eventually, the cluster exceeds the critical size and becomes stable against evaporation. Then, once again, some of the newly formed aerosol may eventually grow large enough to form new cloud condensation nuclei and so modify low altitude clouds. The cloud experiment has found that atmospheric levels of ammonia are insufficient to account for the observed rates of aerosol formation at low altitudes. So other molecules must be involved. They are likely to be organic molecules, but their exact identity remains a mystery. Investigating organic molecules and also aerosol growth to CCN sizes are the next steps for the cloud experiment.